Hello friends, welcome back to our course Math Essential for Machine Learning and today we are going to start a new topic called um, univariate calculus. Basically it means that we are considering one variable at a time and then we are going to see why calculus is being used. Okay, uh, But before that what we want to do is we will take a very simple uh, say learning problem right and this is the first time we are talking about machine learning right and we will take that example derive some intuition behind it and then gradually build up our concept uh, around that how machine can do some learning right and for that uh, for this video or this particular example uh, you might want to revise the concept called independence which we have uh, you know posted a few days back all right okay so for example say you know i have uh, say i have flipped a coin say i have flipped a coin okay say 11 times Okay, and whatever uh, value I got, I just noted it down. Okay, so for example, say I've got an head, then I got a tail, then I got head, head, then I got a tail, tail, tail. Uh, how many of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then I got say head, head. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then say I got a tail and a tail, right? Okay, so uh, so this is the uh, result I got after I you know flip my coin say eleven times, right? So generally, uh, you know I can quickly do and check what is the probability with which uh, you know this particular uh, sequence of head and tail has been generated. So if I have to calculate the probability of head right then what would be i would simply divide by the total number of possible uh, you know uh, cases here and that is 11 right and how many heads did i get i got a head here 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 so 3 4 5 so basically my probability of getting a head is 5 over 11 right and this was this is what you know i have done it manually or you can say by human learning right i didn't do anything called as machine learning here but that's the main idea behind like how can i derive some techniques so that you know uh, i can learn or i can figure out that what is the pattern right what is the pattern or what is a certain equation right so typically given this way what is the equation through which this sequence of data is being generated that is my main intention behind you know doing machine learning I want to find an equation I want to find a you know data generation formula so that I can plug those values in that equation and I can get this sequence right so what would be that now from the independence uh, you know topic we, what you know that if if uh, a certain event has occurred independently of the other one that means i can multiply their individual probability right so say in this case in our case where we have flipped a coin 11 times so what is the probability of getting a head if i denote it by p a small p the next what I know is uh, I got a head and we also know that the probability of a head plus the probability of the tail in one event should be equal to 1 right ok so if that is all I know that means the probability of tail I can simply write in terms of the probability of getting a head right so in this case I can write 1 minus p right all right so if i take this sequence now okay and uh, what i want to do is i want to just create a simple uh, probability formula here okay so what is the uh, formula that i can do is the probability of getting a head 
is p times then what is the probability of getting a t it is 1 minus p and remember these are all independent flips right so one flip is not going to predict or influence my next flip okay so i have p dot 1 minus p then i have i'll just continue from here so i'll have next one is p again i have got p then i have 1 minus p so i'm going to do it for three times here so i'll just write a q at this point then i have p again p again and then i have 1 minus p square and in short i can write it this way so i have 1 p 2 3 4 5 so i can say p to the power 5 times 1 minus p to the power uh, 6 so this is supposed to be 11 because 5 plus 6 is 11 so this set of uh, this uh, sequence of getting a head and tail if i write it in terms of probability then i can write an expression p to the power 5 times 1 minus p to the power 6 right okay so this is my expression sometimes this is also written this way you know uh, and i think that with this equation my data has been generated right so the, oh sorry i think i have uh, reversed this is 5 and 1 minus p to the power 6 right okay so i think that this is the expression which gives me uh, my probability of getting a head right now okay uh, that is fine but then how do i find that value of p from this equation right this is just a uh, variable uh, or the function uh, this doesn't give me any value this is just a thought process that okay my, this probably is my equation which will give me the data but then i have to find the particular value of p right okay so what i'm going to do first is and um, if i plot this uh, you know uh, expression here with in terms of p so suppose i start with uh, p is equal to 0 right that means um, i did not get any head that is say my assumption so i did not get any head but remember we got uh, you know five heads and six tails right from our data set so that means uh, this is not correct right this is not correct um, I got some head definitely because I saw that in the data so this expression will go to 0 right and if I consider p is equal to 1 that means what I am assuming is all my heads uh, that is sorry in my 11 flips I got only heads that means my p is equal to 1 right so again this expression will go to 0 right because 1 minus p will then become 0 so in that case my 0 here and I'll get a 0 here so this will be 0 and this will be 0 somewhere right and now if I keep increasing my probability and I'll say I'll just increase in the equal length but then uh, from continuous random variable we know that uh, this probability uh, can be anything in between right it can be any values in between but at this point of time i'm just taking a fixed width just for the clarity purpose and able to draw it so if i keep increasing up to you know 0.5 and so on till 1 till 1 if i keep increasing uh, and if i keep plotting the probability value here so basically uh, p now c is equal to 0.1 so what would be this expression p times to the power 5 and eventually you'll see that you know it turns out to be something like this if you plot it this looks more or less like a uh, gaussian um, distribution right perfect so uh, you know i can get a curve like this but then what you know what does how does it help me uh, you know figuring out what is the value of p I'm still not close enough, right? 
So, let us draw the graph again here. So, I have something like this, right. So, I have point 1, point 2 and so on till 1 and this is my P. Okay. So, suppose I consider that my probability is, I am just assuming, okay. say point 3. So, I come and stand here, right. So, what would happen is, uh, from the graph, I can see that if I move little bit to the right, I keep changing the color. Okay, uh, if I move little bit, uh, and if I stand here, and I think is this my maximum value, right? But what I can see that if I nudge little bit to the right, my value increased here, right? This value increased. That means. I am still not at the maximum value. Okay. I still can again I continue little bit to the right. I see that I am still not I am still getting some higher value than the previous one and I keep doing it. Right. And I eventually I will come to a point like this here. But then I am still not sure whether I am at the maximum or not. So, what I do I keep going and keep going and eventually say come here and find that okay if I go to the right that means my values are reducing right and if I go to the left so if I go a little bit to the left I see that my values are again increasing that means eventually I come to a point here where the value seems to be maximum now how do you define this in uh, mathematical terms that did this this point here in the very top this is maximum right how do you define that now in order to define that and that's where we use the concept of uh, calculus called uh, derivative right and what does that derivative mean is let me draw a clear picture here what does that derivative mean is suppose this is your graph and what you do here is between two points right you calculate the slope okay and the slope is nothing but a tangent line here okay and that slope that actually tells you whether the graph is going up or not so basically you move little bit to the right then how much are you growing on the top right that is all being uh, you know considered while calculating a slope. So, eventually there comes a point at the very center probably in this example that if you even if you move little bit to the right your height does not change that means you know you your slope becomes 0 because if you move even if you move to the right in this case what happened was if you moved little bit to the right if you moved a little bit to the right your height also changed right and this angle i can say something like say tan of say theta for example if this angle is my theta and it is given by perpendicular over base and base is nothing but this change here right this change is my b if I move slightly to the right, so this is B, very small, and this is my P, that means how much distance did it travel to the up, right? So then I can get a slope of tan theta is equal to P upon B. P is nothing but this. Again, this P is different from our probability P, which I can, I, sorry to take this example, I could have taken A, okay, just sorry to confuse you. This, this is A, okay, the height that it say went from previous point here to here okay now uh, this is a all right and a over b but in this case when we are at the very peak even if i go little bit to the right but my a is zero that means it is not changing its position literally right that means my tan theta is actually a horizontal line that means it's zero eventually uh, it is not giving me any angle that means there is no slope. So, what I got to know is my expression p to the power 5 1 minus p to the power 6 
can get a can get a maximum value for p uh, maximum value that means for what value of p this also equal to for what value of p i will get this expression to have a maximum value right and that is given by i will simply write it as derivative of this expression p to the power 5 1 minus p to the power 6 should be equal to 0 right that is my uh, eventual derivation so let's look into the next video how can we calculate the derivative